If you're watching this video, chances are you have played games from the well-known publisher Yostar. Oh well, at least heard of them once before. I have been playing some of their games for years, and yet I know pretty much nothing about the company I spend most of my income in. I believe it's time to figure out who is Yostar. Yostar Games, or just Yostar, is a video game developer and publisher with their headquarters in Shanghai, China. When the company was founded in 2014, it was previously known as Studio Game Master. During the early days, they were known for making Doshin games. For those who are not familiar with that term, it pretty much means unofficial spin-off material of already established media. Sadly, after further search, I was unsuccessful of retrieving their early works from the abyss of the internet. But spin-off games was not the only thing they were interested in. They chose to invest a lot into ACGN, anime, comic, game, novel in China. They were and still are a leading figure in that even to this day. Studio Game Master, or short Studio GM, became a minor subsidiary and the first and sadly only game they developed was called Nono from Isekai in 2016. Luckily for this one, not everything was lost in the internet. And with just a bit of research, I was able to figure out that Nono was a 2D fighting game, which actually does look pretty fun. I was even able to find some gameplay of it. After looking at the footage, I actually want to try it out myself. And so I tried to figure out how I can download the game. Sadly, I had to figure out that the servers were shut down in 2018. But to my surprise, even 5 years later, there are still people out there making fan art of their characters. But as previously mentioned, Nono was the only game Studio GM has ever developed and released. Which is kinda sad to think about. But their main focus is not developing anymore. Publishing. This was now their first priority, and their first game they ever published was by no means a failure. I would even consider it to be one of the most well-known gacha game during its time. Even to this day, many people have played it or at least heard of it. Known for having the hottest characters among all of gaming, sometimes borderline not safe for work. I am obviously talking about Azure Lane. Its release in 2017 was a massive success in Japan, going as far and releasing a global version just two years later in 2019. The global market was just as stoked about the game as the Japanese were. People were obsessed with it. Ships? Busty cannons? Something no one knew they wanted, but beloved by many. The success wasn't just due to the game being good. The marketing was top-notch, even if you didn't care about the game, figurines and merch were everywhere and probably still are one of the most well-known figures on the market. The success was so huge that Azulane got its own anime in late 2019. Even though the anime wasn't as universally celebrated as the game, it was one of the first gacha games to ever receive an anime. And after 6 years of the initial release of the game, the servers are still open to this day on JP and Global. Choosing to be its publisher turned out to be one of the best decisions they could have made and carved the path of Yostar's massive success. It was clear they needed to expand their business. New locations were added to their branch, one being in Tokyo, Japan, and one in Hong Kong. Based on the office footage I found, it seems like working there must be a dream. Anyway, it's 2019, and two years later, of the release of Esodane, this is the only game they published that wasn't housemade. It was time for the next big thing. And this was Epic 7 JP. Once again, an iconic game for those familiar with gacha games. The end version was already released in 2018, but Yostar brought it to Japan. It found huge success like Esolane, but this wasn't the only game. Machong Soul was published in JP, EN and South Korea. Before I start researching for this video, I always assumed this is a lesser known game, but damn, 
It has more followers on Twitch than Esolane or Arknights, and it seems like it's still booming. But this shows already pretty well that the games Yosta picks to publish are of high quality and they have a good feeling which might be successful and which aren't. In early 2020, they breached out again and added a new subsidiary, but this time it was something more people were hyped about. This was Yostar Pictures. Yostar Pictures was something special, since this opens many doors for the future. An animation studio not only allows it to have better PVs, cleaner animation and better promotion for their game, but also increases the likelihood of us seeing an anime of the games they published. Around the same time Yostar Pictures was formed, Arknights has just been released on Global, JP and South Korea. The timing couldn't have been more fitting. The PVs made by the newly founded animation studio were exceeding the expectations of many. Arknights was in the face of getting more and more popularity and caught a lot of people's eyes with their marketing. There is no denying that those very PVs played a major factor in that. Just a few seconds of their first release PV already proves this fact. Amazing, isn't it? Not only the animation is candy for the eye, but also the music was not the normal tracks you would expect from PVs. But also the ads across the internet is not something that should be overlooked. One of the most iconic ads, for example, is the one with the party. Endless drudgery of your job, your boring group of friends. A game that will give you all the action, strategy, and anime you need with none of the filler. As you guard the sanctity of the right side of the screen with your life that makes nerds' hearts tingle with joy in a mobile game that's objectively better than your real life. Arknights. Even though there is a group of people arguing the ads were bad, it cannot be understated on how much of an influence those had in the growth of the game. One year after the release of Arknights, another game was about to be added to their list of published games. This was Blue Archive. I myself played it on the release date on the February 4th in 2021. I was pleasantly surprised about the game. It was fun to play, the music was once again top tier, and the character designs were, well let's just say, intriguing. But Japan loved it, and based on my recent trip, I would argue it's the game with the most merch among their ranks. Most anime stores had at least a few things of Blue Archive. Things were going great, and Yostar Pictures wasn't sleeping either, while still releasing outstanding PVs for their games. The first homemade anime was on its way. This was another season of Esolade. The reception of the anime was once again divided by the community. Already the first adaptation was considered a failure by many, mainly because it wasn't what most of the community expected. The second adaptation was at least received a bit better. It still wasn't exactly what the community had hoped for and left some of its fans unpleased. The ratings were at least a bit higher than its predecessor. And if you just want to see your wife doing things, then it wasn't so unsatisfactory at all. But it wasn't time to rest for Yostar. They were already working on another project with the company Kong Games, the publisher of Guardian Tales. The game was already released on many servers, but JP was still not a thing. So in collaboration with its developer, Yostar brought it to Japan. I myself played Guardian Tales for a few days, and it is indeed a fun game. Admittedly, I haven't heard much of the game in a while, but considering just that JP Twitter is totaling 150k followers, we can safely assume the game is doing well. But Yostar was about to publish the first game to disappoint their expectations. This one turned out to be their worst performing game they have ever released. This was Revived Witch. None of the games they ever published did so poorly as this one. Did they for once publish a bad game? Well my answer to this is actually no. I was a day one player of Revived Witch and I can confidently say that it was actually one of their better games. Beside Arknights, it was actually my favorite game they released. I even made a video about it, praising it on how good I think it is. 
I have to admit, when I first saw it in the Play Store and I saw like it's pixel art, I was like, nah, I don't want to play it. I probably won't like it. But after I started and I played like for five minutes, I already knew this is a game I really, really like. There are a few reasons why I'm loving this game so much at the moment. But the one big reason is that I started this game, but I didn't feel like I am playing a gacha game right now. It feels amazing, not because it's gacha, it feels amazing because it feels like I'm playing an actual game. The music, storytelling, the story itself were outstanding and many among my viewers and concrete friends seem to agree. I honestly cannot explain what led to its downfall. It's hard to express on how sad I was when I heard that the server will be closed. In the end, I myself stopped playing it after a while and so did many others too. The only thing that seemed to be their demise was that they couldn't retain their players' attention and so eventually it died down. 2022 seemed to be a quiet year. Arknights managed to get an anime adaptation that was received quite well by the community. It didn't manage to drag in a lot of new players to the game, but it was still enough to announce a second season. And once again, hope was there for the Arknights community to have an amazing adaptation and maybe new blood joining their community, especially because the next chapter is considered one of the best in the game. And there was one massive news regarding Epic 7. Smilegate, the developer of Epic 7, cut the ties with Yostar, and with that, Yostar was no longer the publisher of Epic 7 in 2022. There's also one other big franchise we haven't talked about, and that is Nokopara. Now, I assume many of you know it, but for those who don't, Nekopara is a really really famous franchise which actually has its origins for not safe for work stuff. And let me just tell you one thing, Yostar actually planned to release a game which is called Nekopariton. But sadly, even though it was announced in 2016-17, it was planned to 2019 and since then we never got another notice if it got cancelled, if they're still working on it, when it will be released. At the moment we're left in the dark and we just don't know yet. But if they would actually release a gacha game on this, you can be sure, I will be the first to try it and gosh damn it, I would be absolutely in love with it. I love cats, I love cute girls, it has everything I want. But there was another game they just published this month. And that is Aether Geezer. As of writing the script of this video, it's still very hard to say how successful the release of the game was. But those who have given the game a try do seem to be enjoying the game a lot so far. But as for now, the future is unknown. But with that, we have arrived at the present. And we now know who Yostar is. And hopefully they continue to bless us with the quality of games like they did in the past. But with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, maybe leave a like and subscribe. But with that said, I would say have a nice one. And bye bye Samurai Sai, have a good one and see ya.